Howdy, Jamie here with Journey North. Been working in the shop, my wood shop, doing some dovetails, and I'm really needing to get a plow plane for uh, the drawer bottoms. And a couple hundred bucks new. I do have an older one I got for peanuts right here. Not sure the make on it. I don't see any stamps or anything like that engraved in it. Probably a Sandusky or a Ohio Tool Company, kind of their style. These were the kind of the centerpiece of plane makers. Wood dowels. The fence got lovely uh, designs carved into it from their other planes, their molding planes. Everything seems to work. All spins. I got one bad crack on the nut back here. Um, and these were typically just a plow groove in. You get a few different irons with them. This is your most common quarter inch for that, like I said, drawer bottoms. This came from a cabinet maker, along with that uh, router plane I got. So uh, I'm going to clean it up, sharpen it, um, see if it works. I think these are beautiful. Um, but if I'm going to do a lot of uh, drawers, um, this is one that I might clean up and sell um, and put that money for a, a little more modern one, just for the fact that uh, it's going to take some abuse. And these are a little more delicate for the, I mean, we're talking like 1840s on these up until, you know, late 1800s before they come out with the metal bodied ones. I mean, you can still, people still make these, but uh, you can just tell on the age, this is, this is an old one. Well, uh, I'm just going to disassemble it, clean it up. Um, not sure the wood type on this. A lot of them were beech. That was a really good wood. Um, it's got a great patina on it. It's got some cracks and stuff before I decide if I'm going to fill any of them with uh, glue or anything like that or put any oil in it. Just going to scrub it all down with some uh, wood conditioner cleaner. Pick it up at pretty much any hardware store, grocery store. They have something of this this variety. Uh, let's disassemble it. Clean it up. Um, it's got some brass on it, some uh, iron. I uh, don't know how far we're going to go with that. I think they look kind of stupid when you put a high polish on the brass and then the wood has that patina. But uh, I do got to clean it up. So we'll see how they clean up, see what it looks like. Um, it's going to take a long time. Enjoy what you can and uh, super fast forward. I think that cleaned up pretty decent. Once it dries, we'll take a look at it. This brass fitting here, I couldn't get out and I didn't want to damage it, so I just left it in. Um, that's just from the scouring pad there. It did bring in a pretty nice uh, patina when just taking that gunk off. So um, I think I'm going to sit down and scrub this one off the same way and see if we can get that, uh, that to match. More of a copper brass finish. Rather than shiny brass, I, I like that. Uh, wedge appears to be in usable shape, um, but I'm pretty sure it broke at one time. I'm going to keep this wedge in case I sell it so it has the original I came with it. That's a little tip. Always keep everything if you decide to sell it. Um, someone sees a brand new wedge in there, might point that out. You can say, hey, here, here's the original. This was the only thing I had to fix. This little tiny nut for the other side retaining nut. They're made of wood. Um, 
Looks kind of like a cross between a Oreo cookie and a donut. Kind of makes me damn hungry. But this one was cracked all the way through. It was just barely hanging on. Um, had a gap in it like that. And when I was taking it off, I knew it was going to break. I'm happy it broke just, just the way it did. We can glue that back together and hope, like hell, that it's not too narrow. That it, it expanded maybe from where it was previous. So I'm going to hope that stays together once we get it glued together. We'll get working on sharpen, cleaning and sharpen up the iron. And all these damn wood screws. Let's uh, see if it works. It's got a scrap piece, um, maybe some old pallet or something. I'm not quite sure. Wood wants to tear that knot right out. We're going to skip past that. We're hitting on that depth stuff. Let's see what our groove looks like, shall we? Nice groove, make a nice drawer bottom, slide the piece right in there. This pallet wood's got uh, some weird grain to it and it just wouldn't bite into that knot. Probably, probably could take the iron back a little bit and just keep shimming. 
skimming some off, but I'm real happy with that. Let's see if we can mess around a little bit more. stop right in there that's adjusted with this here and locked down with that one runs on this uh, skate right here that runs in the groove and it keeps shaving little bits off till that depth stop hits so it depends on how how deep you want your groove and then the iron can be adjusted for different types of wood whether you want to take just a sliver off just a tiny little shaving or if you got something you can really plow a groove through Threaded rods are your adjustment, nuts on each side. Pretty self-explanatory for moving the fence back and forth. To adjust the iron, small brass hammer or a little mallet. Tap it down there, tighten up your wedge. Um, you can also tighten them up by hitting them in the front, loosen them in the rear, but these are a little more fragile than your regular ones, so that's not something you really want to do with these guys. Tap it. And after cleaning it up, all I did was clean it with that uh, that wood uh, preserver finisher stuff I showed you, that oil. Did no sanding, no uh, stain, nothing like that. Got it cleaned up, put it back together, and just a little wax over the top. And I end up did finding a stamp. If you can see it in there or not, it's a 119, that's the model number right up here. Sandusky Tool from Ohio, which is what I kind of figured. This is the Model 119, which is a like a mid-range. They had fancier ones, and they had uh, crappier ones. The more simple ones wouldn't have the handle. Everything else would kind of be the same. Um, the nuts and stuff wouldn't have uh, the detail on the lathe like this one does. And maybe not the fancier crown molding type here. Um, the real fancy ones would have had like ivory nuts. Um, intricate detail, fancy handle. And I believe one of them, an Ohio tool, sold on auction for like $118,000. I kind of wish that was this one, you know. <laughs> but it works. Um... The newer ones are a lot smaller, and you don't have to be nearly as uh, gentle with them. So if I start doing more drawers, boxes, stuff like that, I'll probably invest in a new one. And when I say new, this is like 18, Ohio, or uh, Sandusky Tools started in Ohio in the 1860s, adopted the Sandusky Tool name in 1869 or 1870, and went up until I think they had a tornado at their factory in 22, 20, 22, 24, somewhere in there. And they only lasted two years after that. And a big part of them not lasting was uh, they really stuck to wood planes. When at that time, iron planes is what people wanted. And they were just a little behind on that. So when I say get a new one, um, I'm looking for something in that 1920 range. Um, a Stanley plow plane or a... 45 combo plane or 55 combo plane. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to going brand new, but I really like that vintage stuff. So we'll uh, we'll see what comes up and what I end up doing. Will I sell this? I don't know. It's pretty freaking beautiful. And it does work. Originally, what it came with eight irons. I only have the one. That's another downside. Good thing it is the, it's the one I need to make a... Uh, Drawer bottoms. And what a beautiful groove down there. It's a 
some of you guys are big into the power tools and say to yourself, yeah, I could throw that on the table saw and make that groove or uh, put a rotor bit in and do the same thing. But if I had this board sitting here and you had yours sitting here, I could do it faster with this. And I have hardly any experience with one of these. Just setting up the rotor and the table saw takes time. And for something that needs to be functional, like you'll never see, these really are the way to go. I'm really happy with it. Sandusky plow plane. What else can I tell you about it? Oh, I thought it, I'm not sure if this is an aftermarket. I don't think it's aftermarket because this. You didn't know, like that brass knob has a lot more copper color, but so does the the nut that goes into. And this one's a lot more brass. But they could have been made by two. The company made the plow planes, but maybe they ordered these from two different people, or it was a transition year where um, they were using up leftover parts. Really hard to say, but it's a uh, it's really cool. I didn't want to make them all. I mean, when you're dealing with brass, you can make them look brand new. When you got something old like this, you like everything to match. And I think I got wonderful patina on this, the original wedge, um, which seems to work fine. I'm not going to build a new one, um, even though this has got that big chip taken out. If I ever decide to sell it, that's what they want to see. Roughly 1870 to 1890, somewhere in there. They're hard to date because they didn't change much. But uh, I'm going to take this board I just did and cut some dovetails in it and make a little box so it don't go to waste. And we'll uh, catch you on the next one. Take her easy.